Welcome back to another episode of Spoiler Talk, where we talk spoilers. I'm Jax. And I'm Kieran. And I'm Tim! <laughs> get him out! Get him out! <laughs> oh, I guess I'll go. <laughs> so, welcome, Tim, to Spoiler Talk. Tim's my brother. We do another podcast, Two Brothers, One Pilot. We did a crossover epi of yeah. that, and now we're doing a crossover epi of this. Tim, what did we watch this week? Uh, well, <laughs> this week we watched... The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 4, Chapter 12? I don't have the title. This is the siege! You fucked it! (laughs) (laughs) God, Tim! We asked you to come in for one episode and you're gonna get it. I got I got the colours right. (laughs) I thought that was all I had to do. That is all I said during the text. I'm sorry, I should. So, we're doing Mandalorian, we're back for another week. As I expected, Ahsoka did not rock up. Did anyone think she was rocking up from last week? As soon as I saw the title card, The Siege, I knew she wasn't arriving. Yeah. And then right after that, I saw Carl Weathers, and then I definitely knew. Yes. There was a, there was a, maybe the siege, she'll come at the end of the siege, maybe. Yeah, but no, yeah. yeah, it was either, it was either what happened, what happened, or Ahsoka was potentially going to be like a cliffhanger kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. I think, yeah, I don't think you use her as a cliffhanger, I think it's like a whole episode thing. And I knew because Dave Filoni's directing episode five, and Carl Weathers was directing this episode, for some reason I found that information out, so I was like, he'll be in this epi. Yeah. And so, this episode is back to season one, back to Navarro. Back into kind of like what really started the show. When we were discussing season one, it's like if it was a movie, it would be mostly just all on Navarro. And it'd be yeah. a montage off Navarro, which is episode four, five, and six. He goes and earns some money, yeah, yeah. comes back. And so day. it's really the heart of what the show was at first. It's really interesting to come back kind of quite quickly after that. But so much has changed. I really love seeing how everything was different and weird. But also not weird. It's just like... I don't know, they're like, you want to guess what's inside this room? And it's a school? I'm like, I did not expect that. I just look at our colourful costumes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know, I don't know how you guys thought, but just straight off the bat, I was like, I love being here. I love, because of the Ahsoka tease last week, I really like that we get this. Because I don't think this is an episode that works after she's in it, maybe? For this season, you know, as the way it flows. Right. And so I really like coming back. And then for the back half of the episode to not be just an episode of the week fun filler and be so integral to the plot to a point where there's more Snokes and Jars and I could not fucking handle it. I don't know, this whole episode, let's, all the things, but the first thing, the main thing that I think is the most important thing is, is this implying, potentially, that Baby Yoda made the snow? I called this, by the way. Oh, I what? called this on an earlier episode. I listened to that one today. Jack doesn't yeah. listen to any of this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, I, I know exactly what you guys have discussed probably better than you do. Yeah. <laughs> I'd you say you're our favorite fan? I would probably say I am the uh, favorite <laughs> fan. <laughs> Even when I told you, all. you had a reaction like, oh my god, yeah, oh, hey, oh. your typical Jack's reaction, but it's... I uh just, yeah, uh, maybe that was for our season one discussion. But yeah, no, no, no. no really? see, you discussed it after episode two, where you were like, "Where do we want this to go?" Sure, but I, I, I guess like, like all hypotheses and like theories and stuff, it's like, oh, that's it. Exactly. Oh, seeing it on screen, having the characters actually there saying words with a Snoke in a jar in the background, I was like, now is it definitely a Snoke in a jar? No, because is it a proto Snoke? No, it's a, I think yeah. it's 100% a proto Snoke, but it's also so blurry and so like, you know, I'm like freezing looking at it and I'm being like, I can see a line there. I can see how you can be like that Snoke, but then if in two episodes are like, that's a Palpatine or that's a this or that's a that, I'd be like, do you think they've put it in there to do that that tease of like, we're not 100% sure if we want to do this. That's we'll see the reaction. Exactly. And I find... Test the waters. Yeah, see how we, we all test react. Test the waters. Exactly. And I find... We like it. <laughs> <laughs> More Snoke! More Snoke! The yeah. big golden rose! Snoke is an interesting character as well. Like, they got absolutely fucking butched. And they'll, they'll get Andy Circus back and he'll oh. knock it out of the park. I'd love to see him I, in this world. I couldn't imagine. That would be spectacular stuff. But, like, so, in this episode, when they get to... Just look, let's just get straight to that and let's yes. talk about the other stuff. Because that's kind of the moment where I just... I couldn't really believe it when I saw it. Like, that guy comes back, the, the glasses scientist from the first epi, and I was like, oh, we're getting the blue guy back, we got the main guys back, Carl Weathers, the MMA oh, fighter, the show the back. The blue so, guy where the carbon, in, like, the, um, the freezing just pops out, and, like, just... Oh, yeah, when he panics and he sees Mando walk in, and he yeah. goes... 
Yeah, so is that <laughs> like, <laughs> so part of me was just like- He inked like a squid? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, is that like him farting? Like he's like, boom! <laughs> 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 like, it's like, like, like a weird- like, Defense mechanism? Yeah. He's putting out some pheromones <laughs> to- <laughs> So, I don't know, having these clones or these like, things in jars where they're experimenting, like we finally, I don't know, I always expected that he wanted to get the baby Yoda to train baby Yoda, specifically that person, to be his like, yeah. like a Darth Vader or like well, a they're, they're, or they're getting something from him, some kind of energy or blood or something yeah. that they're using. And he said in that in that recording that we need more from we the most more blood, yeah. to do more Snokes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So is this the first kind of confirmation of like this is where the show is going? Like they this is the first time you really get an understanding of like why they want Baby Yoda. Uh, apart from the vagaries in early season one, yeah. But I always thought it was interesting, yeah, that, that when we were introduced to the Imperial quasi base on Navarro and we met very serious talking man <laughs> whose name escapes me. And Every time he doesn't need a name. Max Werner Herzog. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I thought his name was Max. I'm destined <laughs> to forget his name. Five seconds and then remember. And then it comes to you. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great impression. <laughs> I just got to, sorry to cut it in, but he, fantastic. They introduce, <laughs> they introduce him, yeah. or is that him coming? <laughs> <laughs> He's attracted to the man. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd do that in the video, Kieran. This not sure. When we last saw him, he wasn't in this shiny silver suit, so he's an upgrade. So he's quite impressed, probably. He just came. <laughs> Ooh, I just like a side note. Like, here's a 350 year sentence. Carl Weathers is very happy to just get Knock years of the hundred. <laughs> it's a, what are you doesn't give up. Yeah. I thought by the end of the episode, he's either going to be dead or have no sentence. Well, no, no, a free right? man or the lord of the town. By <laughs> the end of the episode, Carl Weathers is in his debts. <laughs> I owe you years. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have this idea that Baby Yoda is going to like, I don't know, like they want to use him for the blood. They want to use it to make... He has some kind of force energy. Well, yeah, he's got really the force. So they're, they're able to... Minichlorians or whatnot. <laughs> so that's another thing. He said the M word. He's like, his M count. We, 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 it's either like, we won't get someone with a, that M count again, or we need to find someone with that M count. And I was just like, did he mention midichlorians last season? No. Right, okay. Because to me, I know they didn't say the word midichlorians, but he said M count, which is midichlorians. I'm amazed. This show is like, we're doing prequel droids, mm. future droids. They're, they're, Doing everything, all the things that people like generally, I know everyone's got a different taste, whatever. I don't really give a shit about the Midichlorians, but it's universally hated. I love that they're just embracing it and going, that was in a movie. That was, that's. They're only universally hated because people fundamentally misunderstand what they're saying in that movie. They're not saying Midichlorians are the force. They're saying microscopic life forms to the best of our scientific knowledge of this thing we don't understand are sentient creatures that communicate with the force. So to measure someone's ability or the level at which they can use the force, a good way to measure it is to see their midichlorian count, which are microscopic life forms mm. communicating with the force. It's a scientific explanation for something that they don't quite understand fully, but it's the same way we don't understand everything about the human body, but we measure parts of it through chemicals, through, you know, Take someone's blood, measure what's going on. You can see if they're healthy overall or not, and you can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's th that kind of same vague idea. And he was building to do much more in the sequel trilogy with the yeah. microscopic world of the force. Do you, do you think we'd get into that in this show? Or is not really this show's kind of cup of tea to deal no, with? No, I think so. Though? I think that would be really interesting. I just, it just, just, even just him saying it, like, just, I don't know. They won't go deep, but they might. I just love that they're embracing it all and they're not kind of like, you know, like, let's not get too bogged down to, you know, but like the sequel trilogy, they were like, no politics. Because that's the thing that they're just universally, no, no. But it's like, I don't know. I love a little bit of politics. I love a little bit of understanding. Like at the end of the goddamn episode when he's like, the, the cop, the New Republic guy, he's, I love, Dave Filoni, if he'd rocked up again, I would have been like, I'm done with that guy. It's like they heard our last episode. And they're like, <laughs> yeah. <'cause laughs> Which I, we hadn't released yet. <laughs> I really like that guy. And I really like that he's coming in and he's like, and I don't know, just, there's so much stuff because of the sequel trilogy. is like, everything is just the same again. I'm like, what happened? Are we actually going to just slowly, so little the, tidbits, the find Empire out? become the First Order. Sure, but like, just even having characters being like, we're out in the Outer Rim, like, in the in the central cities or whatever he calls it, you know, 
they don't really understand. They don't think it's a thing. But here, something's going on out here. Like the old empire remnants, like something's similar. Well, that's in the crawl for episode seven. Sure. But yeah. I, I guess I just didn't really expect them to be having conversations and scenes with it. And I'm, I'm really intrigued by all that. I, I love the idea that we're going to slowly thread things that make this really an in-between six and seven. Yeah. Just I, as I, a show, like, like it's doing that. its own thing, but yeah. I, I like that, but I also think that if it just becomes this bridge between six and seven, it doesn't become its own thing. Mm -hmm. And I find some, the, the part of why The Mandalorian works so far is that it is grounded and it's, it, it, it's just a separate story. And, but it's, and it's I, just little nuggets though. I know, but, but if, if you're saying like, and if, if it was Snoke, if Ahsoka's going to come in and be a, a main character, I don't, I don't know, but it's like, she won't then be. it just becomes such a... We're just filling in the gaps. That's what you're saying. Like, oh, maybe we're going to fill... It's like, I don't think they should go, let's fill in the gaps. I think they should just be, this is where the timeline is. If something comes up, like, I'd love it if that was the only time you ever see Snoke. Mm. And it's just like, you, you just see the development of it because that's what would have been happening at the time. I want Baby Yoda you know? to die and that makes Snoke. I want Snoke to be... I want Snoke to be cool. the son of Baby Yoda. Oh that is what I want. Give me that Dave Filoni, you no. new no, maniac. No. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I'm, really I'm on. I'm on neither side of that. I, There's no I, French I, sitting here. I too. do think that. I do yeah, you're not. Like um, Baby Yoda should die though at the end. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, actually don't think that. I don't that's think, horrific. Well, Disney they won't. They won't. No, 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 no. That's the cash cow. <laughs> they need him for episode 10, 11, and 12, presumably. Oh Who knows? God. I don't know. Oh my god. <laughs> this, was, oh. this Mandalorian podcast has been nothing but me saying things to you and you being like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of spectacular. <laughs> so, we've mentioned Baby Yoda. I had a feeling Baby Yoda wasn't going to get any play in be like big four stuff moments, any of that, you know, stopping fire or until he meets Ahsoka and then we'll get a full epi where they do some No, stuff. they have to re-establish it before Ahsoka. So that's what this was. Remember, he's got the Force. Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, for sure. So that was what I was going to mention. The best scene ever. Baby Yoda <laughs> goes to school and the first thing he does is he uses the Force for the first time in the season to get some chow. <laughs> to get a little bit of a snack which he ends up throwing up on himself which is now my favourite moment of the show <laughs> he's like doing spaceship exploding and I'm like this is so good and then he's just like Bleh. and I'm like <laughs> and he's like oh boy <laughs> how do you feel about the snack being the earth snack <laughs> blue macarons <laughs> is that too like it's, even the foil wrapping I was kind of like this is... I don't really care. Because, you know... But then you've already got, like... But what are they going to have the type of... A weird squid candy. thing. Or, you know, some other Star Wars food. We've had a lot of squids, though. Like, but it's just a macaron. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> but, but I only found that out when before the pod, you were like, it's just a macaron. I'm like, is it actually just... Well, I don't like them. They're, they're a shitty snack. I don't... Oh, <laughs> oh get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I'll leave again. I guess I won't take <laughs> <take> the <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Oh, this is what I was waiting for. <laughs> I won't give you a macaron up. The master episode. becomes the apprentice or whatever? No, the oh, opposite. The opposite. I have the high ground. <laughs> you are like actually a bit higher. I feel yeah. very short, like I yeah, should yeah. be kind of like hovering. <laughs> yes, yes. That'd be good if you were force sensitive, maybe you would be just hovering. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I thought, it was a, I thought it was a pretty good episode. Not my favourite ever. But, um, of the season? Of the, of the, yeah, of the season, the series. I feel like they, they're calling it chapters 12. So they, they, I feel like they do sort of want to make it kind of one arc sort of thing. Mm. But um, you said that you liked going back to uh, Navarro. Is that the name yes. of the planet? It, it, it's fun, but I do feel like Mandalorian fall into the trap sometimes of like, we're going back to this thing that you remember. And it's like, we're going back to Tatooine. We're going back to Navarro. So it's him. like... A lot. Yeah. I, it's just like sometimes they should just do it. But without you, it being like an event. You just said though that you didn't want them to do all this other... Like you don't want the fill and gas. You don't do your own show. Hmm. This is the most their own show episode. Because it's like... Except for all the Snoke stuff. But yeah. it's like... Season one, if it was a movie, is all on Navarro. 
mm. and you go off on montage and then you come back. It's that's it. No. So yeah. this being on back on the bar, it's like, but that's the core of the show was here, and now we're seeing we're kind of taking that last part of the empire away, and we're also seeing what's now happened. They're building schools. Mm. He's doing clerk stuff, and we're seeing what has now happened to the whole first season's plan. I'm not saying so, don't go to Navarro. I'm just saying cut the line of we're going to go back to this favorite place from season one. You know, it's oh, like yeah. it's like in episode six of Return of the Jedi. They're not like, we're going to Tatooine. They just go to Tatooine. And it just is. And I just find I think that, that writing and that structure, it's have, like, it, it makes it so episodic of we're going to go to Navarro for this one episode. It is episodic though. I know. It's the most episodic show. This show is Hulk. I saw someone online being like, this show is these four shows, and one of them the was Incredible The Hulk. Incredible Hulk, which the is a man goes movie. to town to town to town yeah. each week, different episode, and there could be an overarching and people are constantly trying to fuck him over, use him for his power, mm. or armor. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> like yeah. This, yeah. But it's like, I just find that they're like every episode he has gone to a new planet, if you then go, we're going to this, it, it just removes any possibilities of maybe we're going to stay there. And once you get rid of any possibility of something happening, wow. it just makes it less engaging. Because it's really? like, what if, what if fucking Ahsoka trailed him, or what if Boba Fett trapped him on Navarro or something, and he's oh, chasing him? stuck on Navarro, you know. But it's like, if you're saying we're going there, it's like we're going there for this one episode, and there's no possibility that that's not going to happen, you know. Like, so we're you want to stay here for the episode. season and not meet Ahsoka? I'm not saying you that can't do that. that. People are furious. Telegraphed by episode? Is that what you're saying? I'm just saying, as soon as you say something isn't going to happen then it removes any possibility of it happening, which removes 30% of the excitement of maybe it is, and I know I know what's going to happen, so it becomes more formulated, mm. and it feels like an episode of television, not a, not a chapter 12 of a 30-chapter story. I, I just, just disagree on all levels. The one part of the episode that I think is a bit like, you're doing this every week, is he gets there, he's like, I'm here to fix my ship, and you are people I know and trust to fix my ship. How's my credit? Yeah, all, all that stuff's amazing. amazing. No, no, and she's like, yeah, I think it's all right. Oh, also, just before I get to my thing, Carl Weathers just being like, how's the baby Yoda? Do I love a baby Yoda? <laughs> yeah. and he's like, you live it out of it. I was just like, yes, please. <laughs> more, more of this. I'm actually really sad that I feel like we might not see him again, potentially for at least two seasons. Oh. But the thing I did... <laughs> Oh, no, no, just because we're leaving. We won't see him for the rest of this season. We might see him once next season. Whereas um, the MMA fighter, the... Gina Carano. Thank you. She, um, at the end of the episode, gets that little tidbit where it's like, she's from Alderaan. Yep. And the guy's like... Join the fight. She's, he's like, join the fight, essentially. And she's like, mm, maybe. But I'm like, I would love to see in season three, just a random episode happens. And we just see a bunch of New Republic people. Like, that guy's back and they're doing a thing. And then suddenly, she's there. Yeah. Joining them. And I'm like... That makes sense. I think it's such, such, such a good beat of that. Yeah, of that older on moment. Oh yeah, having someone act. There's been no one just to sit there being like, ah. Oh. And he's like, did you lose anyone? I'm like, um, the planet got destroyed. She would have lost someone. She's like, I lost everyone. I'm like, oh. Well, no. there's only like three towns in any Star Wars planet. <laughs> <laughs> That's just Tatooine because it's just shit. Great dragons, <laughs> sort of yeah. like Sarlacc pits. And there's shit. so many Tusken Raiders being like, oh, 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 oh. scaring everyone off. They go to Corazon, where it's apparently a trillion people live in Corazon, all right? In this, you're implying they're scaring off buildings, like they become Atlantis, like the Tusken Raiders and the Sand people are like, oh, oh, the town's like, oh, I'm going to Atlantis myself and go underground. That's what that's implying. They just left and all that. Where are the buildings? Stuff corroded over time. So what do we think of the Imperial uh, base skirmish? Uh, I like how Mandalorian just kind of disappears and then a stormtrooper falls and mm -hmm. they get in the door and meet back up with him and he's just kind of taking care of a bunch of shit. Yeah. But not all of it. I, I agree. The One of the my favourite lines of the epi was he just goes, it's not abandoned. But he's not like that face. He's just kind of like, oh, I had to kill like six guys. Come on, guys. I would have liked a heads up. And I'm just like, I'm, this guy's in control. But when, when they're trying to rope him back in, you can just feel that he's like, <laughs> I really don't but now I owe them something because they're fixing my ship mm. and even when he leaves he's just like we're all square yeah like and you feel like, like do you yeah, want do, do you want to have a drink and he's like um 
I'm already at win now. Even though, I remember thinking, like, come on, you got some time. Yeah. It's not like you just went through some shit. Nah, but he's a dad now. He's got to look after his baby. I actually do his like your old baby. I actually do like the <laughs> older than him. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I do love that as soon as Moff Gideon was mentioned, the music goes like doo -doo -doo -doo, the music's a building, building, and he just immediately goes, "Oh, Moff Gideon's alive! Mm. I have to go back and get Baby Yoda." That's he, a good. I love that because there's so many times in TV shows and movies where character doesn't know that other character survived, yeah, but yeah. just because the script says so, they just assume. But all uh, he saw was the ship crash. He thought he so. Died. From his perspective, that guy's dead. Yeah, yeah, That's, yeah. Yeah, there's so. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad I'm, that they've dealt with that very early because as viewers, we obviously knew more than the characters, which yep. is fine. But For it didn't feel like the show was gonna play on that very well. Not not well, maybe, but just at all. So I'm glad that now everyone's caught up. Of like, no, the big bad's still bad. He's still alive. I also gussing about, you know. Yeah, gussing, gussing about. about. That's I, the best phrase ever. <laughs> I'll get a T-shirt. I'll bring it next week. <laughs> Just gussing about. I also thought Imperial base on Navarro. I, yeah, it makes perfect sense. We've been here. They were using a front in mm. the town to lure the Mandalorian in. That wasn't their base. That's their hiding base to protect their real base. Oh. And it fits so well, yeah. Mm. They they don't want a fucking Mandalorian to see their Imperial. They don't want to know what's going, going on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All and the Stoke Jazz. Even when he's like, what are you doing with the child? They're like, it's very unprofessional of you, you know? Ah, like, he's under and says, yeah. no, don't fucking ask. So yeah, yeah. It fits so, when they said, there's a giant Imperial base here. I was like, okay. Yeah. I am, um, so I'm not like the biggest Star Wars fan. I've seen it all. I've seen all of Clone Wars and Rebels, but as far as remembering stuff and the references, and you guys talk about it so much, about the parallels of, of different moments. Like, you were like, oh, in episode two, it's the same season one, episode two, and I'm like, oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but there's like, yeah. <laughs> I've taken it this time. <laughs> Just on that, remember what you were saying, but I actually have a thing that they did last season, last season, episode four, was oh. the only, was, okay, it know. was the first cold opening to not feature the Mandalorian, and they go, boom, and this one starts with the Mandalorian, we'll get to that scene, but then, it's uh, Gina Carano, 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 sorry, oh, such sorry. a fight, such and a and she, moment, she, yeah. actually, let's get to that, MMA fighter, and they're like, MMA fighters just grab bodies and hurl them around and twist them around. Or at one point, leverage. yeah, and let all that stuff. She just grabs one at one point and just uses it as a shield. Yeah. She's just flipping it in different ways as a shield and then just goes, I'm done with it. <laughs> also, all characters in things, especially in The Lion King, the little ape guy goes like, Bwah! and hits with the elbow. And every time in every show ever, Bwah! when someone's coming from <laughs> behind, you go, Bwah! and I'm always like, the force of that happening wouldn't hurt you. But she just goes, boom. And I was like, oh, that fucking cunt is dead. <laughs> He's dead. She is so sexy and powerful and amazing. I love her, especially this episode. I think it was, I don't know. I, I think it really did work on if the screen. you a character in Star Wars, you die very easily. Like one laser and all Stormtroopers dead. <laughs> What's the point of the armor? <laughs> is it armor or is it just an outfit? It's a look. It's yeah. a, like, I, I think, think as a kid, I thought it was anonymous, I guess. I think mm. as a kid, I thought it was their like skin. You know, oh like, God. <laughs> you are terrifying. <laughs> and I don't understand how your brain functions and works. <laughs> all, the, all the fans are like, did you watch the fourth one they put on the outfits? I'm like, I watched the first one. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of, and it's ironic that um, th this was in episode four and it paralleled something in episode four mm -hmm. and it also paralleled something in, in Star Wars. A New Hope episode four of the moment of um, when Obi Wan goes round and turns off the uh, tractor yeah. beam, I believe. <laughs> and it's just that. I, mean, I love, the I love that design of like they what go out, they, they go out onto an open plane where there's no, there's nothing. Why is there not? It's the blue harvest. Oh, thing. T -Rex. it's the blue harvest thing. Uh, why are there no barriers? What a stupid design! It's a <laughs> reference to Blue Harvest, which is referencing the movie. <laughs> no, you, you think so? Because he, he just goes, there's no railing. <laughs> which for everyone, Family Guy is okay, but I, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan, but Family Guy had the best Star Wars parody ever, Blue Harvest. 
They just do a new hope, but it's all family guy. There's a skit in it where there's two guys on, and it's a shot <laughs> from a new hope where the, the death star goes, doo, 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 bzz, and it shoots the laser beam. And there's just two workers with the big black helmet hat things. And they're just there. And there's no railing into space and the beyond and just a drop into netherworld. And I never noticed until this show, until Family Guy had these two guys and they're like, so I asked management about the railing and you know what they said? We've they, been leaning all they day! They said, we've been leaning all day. And then he's like, well, it won't matter when we're all famous pop stars. And that's, I thought we were doing a bit, but you... I, I'm, yeah. sorry, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's, it's my favourite gag in all things. And for them to reference that... Do you actually think it, it was a reference? 100%. That was, the, that was the most significant part of the episode. I was actually so excited. I, I was so being hyperbolic, but yes. And, oh, yeah, the, the speed of chase scene. I had like this moment where I went, is any of this like three minutes real like, at all? <laughs> Except when they cut into the, sh- you know, Carl Weathers sh- driving. Um, it's, I don't know, it's a lot of fun. And then that's like the, the way that they shot, like it's another reference to New Hope. And it, 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 it's, it's pretty fascinating. Like Which the one? parallels. Just like whenever they shoot anything, oh, the it's always, system. yeah, it's oh. always, and it's like, I got one, you know? And it's like the excitement of when they, they shoot one TIE fighter. Also, mm. speaking of the TIE fighters, like the, the TIE fighter pilots, like they're in a rush. Like they're trying to capture these guys who are like escaping with proof of whatever Snoke or whatever, you know. And with a whatever. Imperial tank. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, did you really have time to get into that new outfit? Well, <laughs> aren't they just the pilot guys? They're, they're always in that outfit. <laughs> you, I, another they're almost, your skins. As you, <laughs> if you go back to episode four, when Darth Vader goes to get in his ship to go and chase Luke, he sees two of those black, Outfitted guys and he's like you two with me and then they walk up together. Is that a reference to when Carl Weathers was like, I'll get my two best guys on it. They're right there. <laughs> <laughs> you! <laughs> Why are you guys? I, I, I love as well that at the end it turns out one of them is a spy. Also the one that looks off at Cameron and goes <laughs> and I'm evil! Like, Mustache! Yeah. I, I actually watched this twice because I watched it on my break at work as well and on the rewatch I only noticed it then but it was just like he does like a whole look where he just goes there's like a hissing sound like oh it's very on the nose that he's gonna be evil something I noticed in this episode uh, and and it's really interesting because um, now that we've seen Pedro Pascal's face as Mando the the moment yeah it was like it was like he's in 2020 with a mask on like I've got to take my mask off to have a drink (laughs) I I really like that and the the little tidbits that you didn't get in season one because they didn't want to reveal his face at all um and now now you're just getting small snippets of those interesting moments a very food drink based episode I guess in in general <laughs> it, like one of the things I love, with food yeah one of the things I love about the Mandalorian is how much they go into them just living in the world and mm. getting a dish and people get hungry and people mm. got to live and here's a big piece of meat from a beast we killed and there's <laughs> a little squid and yeah it's stuff you get from TV shows and it, and like and that's it, why I don't like the blue macarons because they've done all this other hard work to be so creative with the enrichment of the universe through food in Star Wars that I love. And then there's just a blue macaron. Right. Like, it's just a thing we have. Which, yeah. there's lots of stuff in Star Wars which are just things we have. So mm. Okay, so yeah, I'm actually going to counter something. And I've just thought of it. So I, I could say it and you'd be like, shut the fuck up, please. But I'll say that anyway. <laughs> Leave your <laughs> time. <laughs> we do not have time for another leaving joke. <laughs> so the first like three or four times over the few seasons, oh sorry, the, the season, he's you know a, 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 a squiddy spider thing is coming down and he eats it, or well, you know Manda crushes it and he eats it. But that's because the Mondo Calamaris just fish netted their fucking ship up. It's like all because they're in the ocean. Sorry, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, so yeah. it just kind of got there, and then they go to a a strange planet and he finds an egg and he rips it open and he eats the spider so big spider lady comes out and tries to kill him and they're all kind of things where it's like yeah so maybe what they really tried to do is like alright they've been out in the elements you know with crazy shit they're at a school at a place that's meant to now be the most civilised it can be and like maybe they went how do we make it civilised and someone's like he's eating a sandwich and they're like that's two primary school and then like he's eating a roll up 
<laughs> with the design of Baby Yoda on it. They're like, that is way too metal. I don't know why you picture that. I also like how there's like an Australian guy there going, yeah. Vegemite, roll up! Yes. <laughs> Give him a Peanut fucking butter. roll up! <laughs> Lamingtons, he should have been... Oh my LCMs. god. LCMs! A Lamington would be more of... Imagine an LCM. I feel like a Lamington would be a less recognisable thing that would fit in the style. Really? Wait, it's a cube... A black oh. cube with white things on it. It looks like something from Star Wars. A macaron is no, like a that's perfectly baked, hard crusted exterior, soft in, and I could see it's just a macaron that they've bought from a place. Yeah, yeah? And I, I think the yeah. Lamington. I would have the. I would be on your side. Because Lamington, most passion. of the world, yeah, yeah, would not be. Exactly. I've eaten yeah. one macaron once and I went. All right, let's uh... Let's so the end of the episode, Moff Gideon's like, I'm fucking ready, and there's a bunch of fucking. Stormtroopers all in black. What does that mean? Are they force sensitive? I, I was looking stuff online and they're like, this is potentially force sensitive. Did you watch? Did you play that game in the 70s? I'm like, of course I fucking didn't. Shut up. Can oh, I? Can so I there's I a game have... thing. There's, it's reference to a game, potentially. Potentially. Called okay. Dark Troopers. Oh, I think. Okay, cool. Cool. What, what, do you know anything about it? Or? So I'm going to get the names wrong, but they're either Dark Troopers or Death Troopers or something like that. And no, one of them. They're from Rogue One. Death Troopers. Okay, so it's not that. So one of them is I don't want that to be one of them is no no let's never mention Rogue One again. <laughs> <laughs> one of them is highly uh, like highly like not implemented like just like really good droids, better than the droids we've seen. Really good droids, and the other are force sensitive, like clones, wow. stormtroopers. So both of them are things from expanded universe. Carl Katarn. So it wasn't all that a stuff. smoke. It was a fucking thing. No 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 no. Yeah. I, I, I'm. Saying because he's got these guys here, what I think the the, the Snoke jars are, what the whatever jars are, I think they are step one, maybe you know draft two of what Snoke will be putting, draft twelve, which is putting the Force into a clone. Yes, yeah, uh, uh, manipulating yeah. a thing to be a thing into a thing with the Force, pushing it in. Like Snoke wasn't made; they didn't find a Snoke and go, "Let's make you evil." They they made him. And they made him have the force. And they failed a bunch of times. And they failed a in. fuck ton of times. Yeah, and I guess we get that in Rise of Skywalker. Cut the moment I said Rise of Skywalker. Cut it! No, but it's like, they, they do have that moment where you see all the jars and it's like... Arr. So there are failed experiments of this. Yeah. So I kind of like the idea that these people... And I like the idea that maybe Moff Gideon is one of maybe 12 Moff Gideon types that are oh. everywhere. There's a bunch of Moffs. There's a bunch of Moff... Do you mean as a clone or like... No, 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 sorry, not, not Moff Gideon 2, 2, There's two, like three. a Moff Tarkin and a Moff Gideon There's a, a Moff, there's a Moff Barry, there's a Moff Gary, there's, there's a, a Moff, Moff Darry. Yeah, yeah. There's Moff a, Larry. Moff Macaroni. <laughs> I love it. And he's all blue. He's like, I'm like a thorn. Yeah. That may be good. Who knows? That's amazing. <laughs> but, so essentially, I saw that last shot and just went, whoa, what? Because I was something like, wait, wait, wait. And I had to like rethink what I'd seen. I'm like, have they implied it's worked at all? And I re-looked at it and I'm like, no, no. He said it worked for two weeks, then it failed. So it doesn't seem like these guys should have the force. Because then why do they need Baby Yoda, yeah? Mm. So I... But then I'm also like, if he's got like a tracker to find Ahsoka, how crazy would it be if Ahsoka had to fight 20 guys with lightsabers? Well, that's what I thought it would be. Because... But they can't be good, that good if there's 20 of them. So no, but that's the thing though. a bunch of them out. But sure, but see, maybe you need 20 because Moff Gideon versus Ahsoka... Moff Gideon doesn't have the force. So Ahsoka will light her lightsaber, he'll light his dark saber, and then she'll be like, force choke and snap his neck. And it's over. Well, you know what I mean? Or do any, sorry, or anything, anything with the force. Take the lightsaber out of his hand. You know, blind him with the force. Like, with, I don't know, just if they both have the force, it's, it's a Jedi versus Sith kind of thing. But now it's just one person who's really talented versus a dude who has a good sword. But if he's got 20 guys who are fucking crazy. in the arms, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> so is it is it like is the, is where we're going with Baby Yoda essentially like they're gonna strip Baby Yoda of all its power and then spread it throughout people slowly, slowly. You say not kill, so maybe not to the point of death, but slowly making Baby Yoda weaker and weaker and weaker. Well, whilst the Sith become I've got stronger. A, I've got a feeling that this ep- this season might end with a they got Baby Yoda. You know what I mean? And that's how we finish off season two. And even going into my... I don't know if I've said this on the no, podcast. No, you have it. You have it. I was just Sorry, about to sorry. say it. That's why... They, they, need, they need to do a couple of episode story arc 
to fulfill a couple of things, all right? Now, what I've envisioned happening towards the end of season two and where we're building is that Moff Gideon and the Empire will get Baby Yoda, they will capture the Mandalorian, probably with the help of Boba Fett, <laughs> overpower him, yeah. strip him of his armor, <laughs> and dump him on a planet, and then we get three, the we side. get three episodes of Pedro Pascal, Din Djarin, on his own, no armor, no Mando, oh and he my. has to climb back up to the top, get a ship, get his shit together, and go back and save Baby Yoda. And that's how season three should start. Love or, it. yeah. That's really cool. So the that's better than the last time you said it. Oh my god. So the end so of weird. season two is like he's stripped thrown onto an island. You've got to take every well because that's season really one end of that season two one gave him everything. Season two needs to rip it all away. Yeah, the classic yeah. act two. And then and then in season three he falls into chaos and he has to rise back up. We, we also give now the main reason to do it. I think is to give Pedro Pascal like an actual opportunity to act. Yeah, no, to be no. a performer to I am um, yeah. and I, I and remember he's fantastic I remember Rowan and other stuff yeah yeah he's really good and in, then um, never do it again as well. do yes, it yes. once for one arc put him back in the outfit and then never again just it, that is it the idea though that like once the, the arm is off he can't put it back no no no, no. If they capture him beat the fuck out of him take the armor off him and leave him on a planet like he's not gonna just kill himself he's gonna want to beat them even hard. I know, but then maybe there's that moment of like, maybe he as a character doesn't want to put the armor back on. He well, yeah, because he's lost it. Sure, <laughs> great character beat. For yeah. sure, but I strongly disagree because of the last two episodes of the show. Episode two of this season, I'd be like, well, yeah, his mantra is if the helmet is taken off him forcefully, he can't put it back on. That's the law. This is the way. Guess what? This is the way. Is a random terrorist organization. He just met a bunch. Them. Yeah. He just met a bunch that just went. Actually, we're the real Mandalorian. It doesn't matter. Look at me. Gets... It's take, take your helmet off. Like, Join what? us, bro. Paint your armor blue. What, you have yeah. sex with your helmet on. You're a fucking weirdo. <laughs> a terrorist organization is weird. I, she, Bogatan dropped out of Death Watch, and his children are the Watch. It's just a subsection or the main thing of Death Watch now. I think that seeing him take the helmet a bit up and drink. It's the like. It's like part one. Well, you know, they, that, that, the, that's like, like psychologically that, that's something that's very true is that people don't erode their values and behaviors in one swift move like a character arc in a movie. Typically, it's done moment by moment over time. Yeah, that's yeah, how yeah, people yeah, become yeah. bad people. It's like one day at a time. Oh, one, I know. I've spent all day doing that. <laughs> you know, it, it's trading a piece of yourself one thing at a time. You know, maybe even working for a big company that you hate. And you got to go there every day and say the same shit that you know isn't true, that you don't believe. Stop talking about my life! I lived it for eight years! <laughs> Touche. <laughs> We're getting too real. Back to Star Wars. Carl <laughs> Weathers. <laughs> um, no, okay. That, yeah. I'll direct it by Carl Weathers. To, yeah, yeah. I think, for spectacular, if he appears... I actually think that his character should appear just like one more time next season. I think I really like the idea of this guy that was like a... The, the overarching thing, like thing, he was there for the first three, and then the last two, just come back once a season and yeah. touch base with him. I really love that. I think that's a great. If it's eight episodes per season, I'm just going to presume it is. I really like just taking that step back and seeing where he's at, and I don't know. I was Sorry. just going to no, say yeah, okay. the one kind of feeling I had though after this episode was done was what is stopping the Empire just rolling in and obliterating this place from space, like. Navarro, I mean, you know, they just wreck their base. They don't appear to have any real defense. I mean, they said we have a safe zone, so maybe they have some larger form of defense. I, I mean, wouldn't it be tragic if Moff Gideon meets um, Mando? It's like I just and he holds him. up Carl Weathers' head. Oh, He's just like, oh, <laughs> not in a Disney show, but yeah, yeah no, maybe. No, but you know, like yeah, yeah, something, yeah, something, something like that, or like we maybe uh, I keep going to say Boba Fett, uh, Mando. Um, you know, he's got like the, the, the blue holler thing and uh, Carl Weathers is like, oh, I'm just, I'm back at school there. and blah, 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 he just dies and, and Moff Gideon walks in he's like, hmm, <laughs> mm, dark through the chest. Oh, that's actually about it. Yeah, of course he did do that, not a gun. I don't know, like you could do that. You could have him come to Navarro. Actually, what would be a great thing to do just before, like the episode before Mando loses his outfit? Like if we're going with this, because that is how the season should end. Now you've said that, where we're at in this season, I'm like, I want that to be the end. Because he's really powerful and strong, and the armor, like, you know, people are like, like the, the Squiddy guys were like, 
the best car is ours. Ha <laughs> You know, and then they just want it for that. So to take that away, it's like, what is he without the armor? Mm. You know, like, how we get to learn? What, yeah. what is Iron Man without the armor? Like, do you yeah. have an Iron That's Man Iron kind Man of thing? Yeah, I actually yeah. really like those aspects. Where he's like, he's only got the hand and the, the leg and... Yeah, and he's... Still kicks off. He's exactly, because he's a billionaire for a lamp... For, 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 That's it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just put in the quote from the movie <laughs> and you got a sexy guy saying it and stuff. No offense, but I don't play well with others. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that away, what are you? Uh, genius. Billionaire for a lamp... For, 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 <laughs> But I don't know, I think that, sorry, what I meant to say though, is at the end, if we're going to take, you know, if we're going to take away stuff, maybe burn Navarro to the ground at the end of the season and kill Carl Weathers. Take all I don't want that to happen, but that's going to hurt me. And what hurt me in the first season was realizing how much I love Quill. I have spoken. Yeah, sorry, I forgot his name. Which, but, you know, he's like, I have spoken. And then he just fucking dies at the end of the episode seven. I, that was the moment in the first season where I went, oh no, I'm in. Mm. Like, I, it felt very week by week. And then suddenly that end of that episode, I was like, Oh, oh, fuck, we're up to a finale. I fell well, in just... love with a character I didn't even know I was in love with until he was dead. Until, and you just go, oh, now we're not, yeah. And I don't know, so maybe do that with him this season. And now I said that, it's like, this show is very much, we're going to do a thing that, that you know, they've, they've been doing things very, like, season, so episode, on episode. this on this structure, I feel like you've described a three-season show. Ooh. Because it's like, you're going act one, act two, act three, to okay. play it like that. If 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 Because the act two structure of Star Wars is like, the baddies win mm-hmm. in pretty much everything, and then the good and then the, the the good guys win in the end because of course. But it's like in this situation, then the end is season three. So uh, is it too early for them to, yes. to strip? No, I'm not saying yeah, that, yeah, yeah, right. Is it too early for them to strip Mando and make him the bottom of the bottom that he'll ever be in the show because he can't get any any more downtrodden than no armor? Is it too early for that? Is that more of a season three thing? But it would be. I think the first three episodes of season three should do that, and then I, I reckon it should be a five to six season show. Then at That's, the end, that, of, that feels nice. Then at the end of season three, he loses his armor in that structure. I think that it's too early in the six. And whenever you're constructing any form of entertainment, whether it be movie, TV show, whatever, you should always put all your good ideas in at the moment, at, in the present. You never know how how long things are going to go. Mm-hmm. What will change in the future? What actor may pass away? What director may be unavailable and get another project? And keeping a show together, it's why most shows don't, aren't good for more than five years. Because mm. keeping a g- group of hundreds of people together that long to continue to serve on the same crew, after a while, it's a different crew of people. It's a different show. Yeah, yeah. But so, I feel like at this point in like the... I don't want this to be like, a Dexter season like, five situation. But yeah, I don't want him to hold things back because it's like, this will be a season four thing. I want him to be like... Do it fucking now. This is the moment we're in. This is what we're built to. This is what we've earned. And I think they can earn it by the end of season two. And I agree. We can we can get there. We can do that. And I don't want that to be... That doesn't have to be it. Like, do that. Have that little arc. Have him rise back up. Have him, you know, have to scramble together some armor and, and rebuild himself as a character a little bit. And then... That's- from there, you can go anywhere. It can be any amount of time. It doesn't have to be, now we've got to finish at season three. I think if you looked at like a show that was five or six seasons long and there was like a guy, like the main character of your whole show wears a helmet you've never seen, and then there's like three episodes. Mm. I, I just think I that really would... Enjoy and I think that if the show keeps going for longer, it's like you're going to have so much more like, fuck, I know the guy under the armor now. It, I, it's also... When you pitch that to me, I'm like, if they don't do that at some point in the show, they fucking fucked it. You need to drop him on a world where he's not known, where where the Mandalorian thing isn't hanging over him. I mean, no one knows his face anyway. So. Yeah. Can Boba Fett survive season two? Uh, he, I think he'll, he'll get he's stripped. Not a he'll get stripped of the armor. Not Boba Fett. Oh, Mando. Okay. Mando, <laughs> Mando will get stripped of the armor. <laughs> Episode 3, Season 3, Boba Fett comes down to fight Mando. Mando beats him, steals Boba Fett's armor. <laughs> That's his new armor. I feel like Boba that's Fett. armor though, yeah? <laughs> yeah, in his own armor. It, it is yeah. armor. Yeah. I see what you're saying, though. Because like, yeah. he's fake Boba, he's Boba. <laughs> yeah. So you make Boba real Boba? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like, Boba Fett's dead. And then you get like... Two episodes where he's wearing the Boba Fett, <laughs> and it's like, and you get the, and you, you actually get the have... Raylan Gibbons, like it doesn't fit in. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's all it's weird. You get I, like... actually, I don't think they'll kill Boba Fett because they've brought him back now. Like I just don't see them 
like <laughs> right if yeah. they do it'll be definitive you know it won't be another yeah. like pit mm. situation but yeah what do you think of Mando wearing a Boba Fett outfit I actually do like that but I, I just think them- like just I don't know thematically in my brain it makes sense to get back the armor that they stole and at the same time he'd get back baby Yoda and then right. though so you don't then the Empire or the, the remnants of the Empire Moff Gideon's crew they will have a bit more blood Bloody the science nerd guy can bloody evil nerd man can make a Snoke. Ma- it's too late, Mando. We've made a Snoke. Pushes a button. Andy Circus. And he's like, "Look at this gold robe I made for the Snoke. How and sexy then, like, is it?" And then Pedro we're only going to use it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and we're all just like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean. So I feel like the one thing we haven't mentioned is the cold opening. Which I love cold openings, but there's two cold openings in this one because it goes Mando and he's like, maybe we've got to find some friends and we see the friends beating up people. So I have two things to say. One, she beats up the guy. I think he's from the race. Like that, you see that creature in the first in Star Wars, like A New Hope. But they are the oh the butt face things. Yeah, go, I don't. I'm yeah. looking at it being like I don't even know what to say. All I can say is the ugliest creatures ever committed to film in Star Wars and anything seeing like six of them yeah they're normally on their own yeah one seeing a group of them trying to like murder a ferret I was just <laughs> like that ferret I love yeah, that effect right? that was so I I was trying to figure out where the scene was between a digital and practical right. and I couldn't figure it out it was just I mean it's obviously a puppet and they're just removing a green hand or Maybe he, there's more to it. It felt like, yeah, I don't like the way Yoda. Yoda. There's a lot of stuff where I'm like, are they CJ tweaking this? Because it's very good. I said last <laughs> week or the week before, one of, one of the weeks I said, Baby Yoda is Baby Group perfected, mm-hmm. but they are falling. They, they did the same joke. Mm. Baby Yoda is like, oh, doop, 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 red, doop, 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 doop. And he's like, no, no, do, do, do. and I love that scene. You just know how it's going to end as well. No, no, you know how it's going to end, but that's kind of the fun of yeah, scenes yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of the same scene as in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. The thing. Rocket is like, I have a thing with two buttons, Groot. And only you, little Groot, can take it to the thing. But make sure you press this button, not this button. It's essentially red to blue. And he's like, press the red one. And then Groot's like... Go into the blue, and it's like, haha, oh, yep. he doesn't understand colors. I was in all yeah. the trailers, and yeah, yeah, I remember. And it's that. a great scene. I'm not trying to take away from Guardians or this. It's they're both great scenes, but it's like, it's the same scene. Mm-hmm. And I feel, Bob, I feel Baby Yoda is very much like a Groot. Like they're like, we'll do what Groot did, but with a Yoda. Mm. And I actually love. I love Baby Yoda more than anything when he vomits on himself at the end, and when they're flying the ship, and Baby Yoda's just like. <laughs> it's just like a roller coaster ride to me. He's like, ah! <laughs> it's the greatest moment of TV. The, I love it so but much. But the just the ship flying in itself too, I thought was pretty spe- as it always is. But this show is really nailing that stuff. Like it's it, he only fights like two things, and it's like it's like a minute scene, but it's just it's spectacular. This is TV. I don't know. This this show really is doing the Game of Thrones thing to me, where I'm just like, it's TV, but also it's better than most movies I'm watching. We did it, we did it, we did the, the crossover event that everyone's been calling for. <laughs> yeah, should we talk about? So Tim is part of me and Tim's podcast, Two Brothers, One Pilot. Where I'm Jackson. And I'm Tim. <laughs> We're just doing an episode now. Making, <laughs> making their live action debut. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, so yes, it's, it's been pretty interesting. Yeah, anyway, so it's a it's short form uh, TV podcast where we talk about TV pilots. So if you thought this was way too long, well, it is. I can't believe you're still here at the end. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm shocked that you'd probably get this plug, but I mean, we talk very quickly and... Uh, yeah, 15 yeah. minutes we go in and out, boom, 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 what do we think? Yay yeah. or nay? Yes. And last week, or this week, sorry, we did Lost in Space with Kieran. Mm. So today has been a huge crossover event. And just to hype everyone for later, if you're like, oh, Star Wars isn't for me, but I've watched this whole video. As I'm saying this, I'm like, this doesn't make sense. But if you're keen for Marvel, maybe there'll be another crossover Marvel event later Ooh. with uh, WandaVision. Ooh! Also, uh, the link of Two Brothers One Pilot will be in the show notes below. Take that, Kieran, and yes. put it in. Spoiler Talk is produced by KCBN Studios and Space Kraken Media.